Hi everyone, welcome back. This is John Lin, the co-founder of the Studio Project and Accelerator Awesome and host of Accelerating Future, done in per partnership with Smart Professions. Our goal with these conversations is to broaden uh, popular access to accelerators, what's going on in this space, why they've been successful with startups, and also imagine how accelerators can support the future of work, education, uh, and really human organization. So we'll be talking about ways that accelerators have helped establish startup ecosystems all over the world, ways that they've created innovation inside of corporations, governments, universities, and even begin to understand how they could themselves be a new kind of company. So with that, uh, we are very excited and uh, lucky today to be here with Bahia, who has worked with accelerators uh, internationally, not only to set up ecosystems, but to also drive uh, capital investments and help support uh, founders of all kinds in a variety of ways, uh, both in the U.S. and beyond. So, uh, Bahia, thanks, thanks again so for Thanks so much for agreeing. having me. Yeah. Uh, super excited to, to, to have you. Likewise. And, um, and if you could just sort of start off and give everybody a, a sort of a taste of what you've been up to and where your experience in this space has been, it'd be awesome. Place yeah, to start. absolutely. So um, I've been working in, across the intersections of innovation, technology, uh, social entrepreneurship and enterprise pretty much my whole career. Um, as a consultant, um, the space has evolved, you know, in the last maybe 15 years or so. Um, I moved from, um, you know, consult being more of a business manager for high net worth individuals that had, you know, portfolio companies, some yeah. of them that were tech enabled. Mm -hmm. um, and then through uh, working with social enterprise organizations like Ashoka mm -hmm. uh, to build their digital uh, partnerships across sub Saharan Africa. And uh, around 2010, between 2010 and 2012, I got really interested in the continent of Africa um, and how innovation was being seeded there. Um, at, uh, I think it was 2008, there were about six accelerators and hubs on the continent, a continent of almost a billion people, <laughs> um, and some of the major kind of, you know, tech-enabled markets, really was Nairobi, was where there was optic cable and there was actually, you know, real tech infrastructure, of smart city, quote unquote, infrastructure. Um, and so I saw that that was happening and that there was a lot of um, private sector and public sector interest in this like frontier market, which is the continent mm. of Africa. Um, and so we dug a little bit deeper, I dug deeper, and um, was uh, just really fortunate to uh, serve as executive director of a early stage fund and accelerator called Africa. Uh, the, the accelerator on the ground. One of my favorite fund accelerator names ever, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so good. Thank you. Um, yeah, so it was uh, founded uh, as I was working with the, the first, the founder, John Gozier, uh, who uh, I've, I met through Ashoka and uh, my work at the Sh Ashoka and my interest in the continent. And uh, we decided to work together and partner and I took kind of ownership of the program, the accelerator. Mm -hmm. We had a virtual accelerator and competition called Apps for Africa. Um, that ran for about five years. And we co-invested with the State Department, the World Bank, and other kind of public and private sector partners, um, including at the time Nokia, which is no longer uh, Microsoft, when they launched their For Africa initiative was one of our partners, which was great. Um, and there's like a variety of other kind of on continental focused and international like, you know, donors, organizations. Um, the incubator accelerator, um, uh, the brick and mortar was in Kampala, Uganda. Hmm. So it actually wasn't in Nairobi. So that was an interesting, even though they're neighbors, it was an interesting um, use case and test case for the accelerator model. Um, and after our accelerator incubator, you know, was founded, then the kind of the sector started to grow. Hmm. So um, I think it's important to note that the eight, the six to eight first hubs have now turned into over 300. Yeah. Um, and just that short, you know, 10 to six to 10 year period. Yeah, so yeah. I've seen it shift and grow and 
seed in some really amazing and powerful ways and have not been to 300 accelerators so, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. on the continent. But I know a lot of the fund man, I mean, excuse me, the uh, accelerator managers, incubator managers, et cetera. So the, the original six to eight programs of which mm-hmm. Apricot was one of the first yes. five yes. has now blossomed into a industry of 300 programs in Africa. Yes, across great, the great. continent. Yeah. Over the East, past West, six to 10 years. Yeah, 10. Great. Eight to 10 years. Yeah. 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 So uh, a number of things uh, to dig into there that I want to establish around ecosystem development, yeah. accelerators in general, um, even uh, international collaborations as Absolutely. you know, so it happened between uh, Kenya and Uganda. But uh, uh, so we'll spend some time doing that. And then I want to, as we look forward to how we can apply accelerator models, yeah. talk a little bit more about your current projects, sure. uh, which I'll, I'll be excited to share with everyone as well. Uh, but, you know, first off, I think what we hear in sort of that description of what you've done uh, to help build uh, ecosystems in Africa around an accelerator program is emblematic of how an accelerator can help create an actual economy yes. inside of any sort of setting or, 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 or environment. And, you know, like you said, six to eight programs uh, eight to 10 years ago is now 300 across the continent yeah, now. Exactly. Uh, worldwide, the, 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 the growth has been similarly exponential. Mm-hmm. I think there were nine programs worldwide by the end of 2009. There was the original programs, Techstars the YC, and YC in 2006, 2007. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then by 2013, four years later, there were still only about 200 programs all over the world. Sure. Um, suddenly from by the end of 2015, there were 2,500. Exactly. And now I know that even in just the eastern seaboard here, uh, there's 2,500 yeah. programs. Right. Uh, so we're, we're, we must be looking at tens of thousands mm-hmm. of programs worldwide. And I think the, the anatomy that you just sort of described for how the hackathons and programming fed into an incubator, fed yes. into an accelerator, yeah. supported by a capital, uh, has a, a to venture be. capital, yeah. um, is, is a great example of how an accelerator can be the foundation for uh, this sort of entire economy to develop from Gross. both the resources side and participation. Right. And those are the reasons that I think you've, you've seen so much adoption of the accelerator model not just in startup communities all over the world, but by governments and corporates and universities, Absolutely. right? And, and you, you, you said that there was some collaboration with the State Department yep. in those countries Absolutely. as you put those groups together. Mm-hmm. Um, so just hearing that, I think everybody should sort of be be aware of, uh, of, of how, uh, how powerful these platforms can be in bringing together uh, participation and and activity uh, in these in these sectors. So, um, and and especially as I look to what's happening in New York oh, right yeah. now, right? We oh, have yes. 120 universities, right? We have most major corporations have some sort of office space here, and they're all really channels for innovation and you know entrepreneurship and startup growth and in the city right absolutely so you have all these highly talented individuals at corporations Mm -hmm. or uh, in graduate or undergraduate programs at universities and and they're doing the hackathons and the entrepreneurship programs yes in the way that you set up um in 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 uganda nairobi um, and, and, and so my question to you is, is related to the challenge that I'm seeing right now yes. here in New York City. Thank you, right? absolutely. Is, is how, how do you take that activity and that participation and give it, give it a pathway forward after the hackathon or after the entrepreneurship program absolutely. into the accelerator? Yes. Because right? we have these Important. 120 universities yeah. and they have the hackathons and they do all the entrepreneurship programming, but it's still kind of unclear. What happens next? So, so how did you address that problem? Yeah, what was I mean, it a problem? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely was. I think, uh, well, you know, a few things there. Well, I think it's it's really important to establish a framework and mm. to understand what the goal is. I mean, I know it sounds really simple, so but I think, um, you know, when you're in an innovation space, human-centered design, all of those key words, you know, that have now popped up over the last decade, um, part of it is like, what are we solving for? You know, what are we actually trying to accomplish? And I think, mm. you know, there's 
there's layers and levels to everything and particularly in the world that we live in now. And so I think it can be really um, beneficial for, um, you know, a cohort or partners that come in and say, okay, we want to establish an accelerator or an incubator. What are you establishing it for the purpose of what, right? Mm. So if it's a, um, a university, you know, a lot of times it's around, you know, innovative ideas. And it really is just about the innovative ideas and kind of seeding them and kind mm -hmm. of being a testing ground, right, for, you know, human-centered design yep. around, you yep. know, solving problems around those things. Um, I think that it can sometimes, it just depends, but as to your point, this space is accelerating, especially in New York, over like five years from 2010 to 2015. Mm -hmm. Now you have a tech infrastructure and ecosystem. Yeah. And Bloomberg did such a great job of kind of establishing. I was mm -hmm. gone those five years. I came back, there was nothing, you know, meaning there wasn't like a real ecosystem. And I came back five years later and like, yeah. voila, you have one, right? Um, and so, and so, you know, as, um, as programs, you know, incubate themselves, and then try to scale, it's really important to have goals and kind of phase out or you know, create phases for what you're trying to accomplish. So if you're really trying to get startups, you know, seated and funded and like out the door, that's a totally different program, totally. right? Than having uh, a, a academic or community driven environment where you're just saying how, you know, let's let's discuss and um, and explore, you know, a hundred different ideas mm. and, you know, give a little bit of support, you know, support could be, you know, financial and non-financial resources. Here you go with 10 grand, here you go with like a place to work for three or four months or six months. Here you go with these things that allow you to, you know, explore the ideas that then may or may not turn into a startup or turn into a company. I think that type of incubator or mm. accelerator is very different than, you know, coming in with a, you know, viable solution or something that you've already got, um, you know, use case, you've already mm -hmm. tested it, you have the MVP, you're kind of ready to go. And then that accelerator is then helping you to scale your growth. That takes different types of partners, that takes different types of, you know, capital infusion, that takes different types of investors, um, public sector versus private sector. Mm -hmm. And so being really thoughtful about what your goals are and just understanding that you can be kind of anywhere in that value chain, but like, let's be clear <laughs> about what that looks like, I think that can translate into value for your members so that it sets expectations. I think it can translate into value for your partners because not only does it set expectations, but it says at the end of the time, you know, at the end of this course or the cohort, expect yeah. these results, expect a million great ideas that we can then share versus, <clears throat> excuse me, you know, a hundred different businesses, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So. Yes. Uh, I think all of those stages, those life cycles of innovation and growth are really important to explore. So I also, you know, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have, you should just go into an accelerator. I think that incubators matter in the sense of that's the literally an incubation for ideas for, you know, potential, you know, children mm -hmm, to be, mm -hmm, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. brought into the world yeah, that are... Yeah, that are nourished and that are like ready to thrive on their own, right? Mm. If you, you know, if you think about incubation in that sense. So there's a couple of interesting orders of operations that I think, you know, his expertise is speaking to right there. And uh, the first one is before there's an accelerator, uh, there has to be a uh, volume and, uh, for ideas and an understanding mm. of what people are thinking about, interested in, have energy for, and an incubator or some sort of Lab, coordination you know. of labs yes. or hackathons or uh, programming can help develop that, 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 that sort of groundswell. Yes. And the second is, hold your horses, we've got the ideas, great. How do we want to move them forward? What are the right. objectives and the impact that yes. is going to, be, going to be helpful, but that we can actually bring our stakeholders together around to support? Yeah. Is that... Sort of yeah, the, as a, you know, I mean, go to market, right? So you've got the idea and then you've got the, you know, business structure and then you have, you go to like how it actually operates in the market. So those mm. are three different kind of components. And again, being um, kind of clear and thoughtful about, you know, where the incubator accelerator does its best work, one, um, and then where you want to see the outcome of those, um, those entrepreneurs so that they're working towards that goal and they're not, 
kind of either shuffling around right. with a lot of ideas or they have one idea and they're so like, this is the only thing we want to work on. We just need these things to, we have the go-to-market strategy. We mm -hmm. just need the literal acceleration, you know, so that we can get it into the market um, quickly, efficiently, and, you know, with the support of the partners that the accelerator brings in. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, how did you, can we be specific about mm -hmm. uh, around how you scoped those scoped for that in designing the Africa program? What were some of the keys to understanding the right objectives yeah. and how, how did that translate to bringing together the ecosystem? I think that's one of the, you know, if I do say so myself, the brilliant things that uh, the, my, my, the founder and kind of, you know, partner, co-founder mm -hmm. later um, saw in me, which is like that framework kind of systems thinking, because mm -hmm. I've been doing it as a, you know, consultant <laughs> yeah, for so long. And so I was like, wait, okay, you mm -hmm. know, what's the, what's the goal? What are, is that really our goal? Is that, you know, align with our partners? Can mm -hmm. we explain it to them in a way that they're fully bought in? Um, and so that was really important to me when I came in as executive director mm -hmm. to really establish those baselines because I was like, I want to be able to measure our growth based on mutual, mutually agreeable, mm -hmm. you know, KPIs or key performance uh, in indicators or goals. You know, this is what we're looking to accomplish. We're looking to accomplish investing, you know, $150,000 in the uh, 20, you know, best ideas across mm -hmm. the continent that are solving, you know, civic challenges, democratic challenges, um, ag, you know, agricultural challenges through technology. You know, and so what does that look like year upon year if we have for for the State Department um, when I came in, you know, they had different goals every year, meaning, you know, the diplomatic corps and Rod, Hillary Rodman, Rodham Clinton was the uh, State Department, you know, was the head of the State Department at the time. So. You know, she would do a video message, you know, this year we're really, you know, interested in like governance and what does that look like in emerging markets. And so we would kind of tailor our online virtual competition to mm -hmm. those, you know, those goals. And so we narrowed. And so, you know, we would have to, you know, unfortunately turn away or, you know, not engage the other ideas. And so just keeping that focus. Um, was really important to us so that we could yeah, show yeah. the, you know, these ideas in a holistic and kind of investable way. Mm -hmm. And when I say investable, I mean really seed. I mean, we're talking about, you know, the first generation of tech entrepreneurs. So it wasn't as much like a venture capital play as a, um, we see that the infrastructure is building, tech infrastructure is building across the continent in some key regions and key areas. What are local challenges? that local innovators and entrepreneurs that would not have access otherwise, what could they build? You know, they've already self-taught themselves code. I mean, it was crazy. It was like all of this innovation in terms of like, we want to develop solutions for ourselves and our communities. How could we engage them with these specific themes mm. every year to then, you know, give them the capital, you know, up to 20 or 30 K depending on, you know, how, how good and how, uh, their background and their their um, appetite for growth was, mm -hmm. and then kind of help them plug in, you know, plug into the conferences that were coming from Silicon Valley, plug into the Berlins, the Republicas, the mm -hmm. kind of larger conversations happening globally around, um, you know, incubator, ac accelerator, and um, startup growth. Amazing, right? So uh, what, what one of the important points that I'm hearing there is that the, there's there's both unpredictability and structure in yeah. a partnership with something like the State Department or a government. And, yes. and, and this is something that, that we see all the time in working with uh, universities, yes. corporations, and, 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 and governments, right? Uh, is that there are very specific thresholds at which things stay the same or change. Yes. And that can be upsetting because it can alter the way the program is structured, yeah. the partnerships that you've mm -hmm. designed around the program, mm -hmm. the kinds of stakeholders that you're bringing in on the resource side yes. to support outcomes. But at the same time, it can really help define participation because the greater public now knows this is where the government, the nations or the corporations or the universities right. focus is. Exactly. And you can harness that 
and say, okay, well, that's where the, the competition is going to be this year. Yes. And that's how we're going to find, that's, that's the entry point. For I think those are the best accelerators, you know, and again, incubator, accelerators and incubators have that clarity and mm. that focus to your point so that it can align with the right, you know, That's resources. so interesting. So there's almost something that's critical and necessary about an accelerator or any ecosystem leader and developer being aware yes. of the narratives that are being spun out at a public level because tapping into those is is really how you're going to create an invitation yes. uh, for anyone to be able to know where they fit in and to begin participating, even if they have the skill of yeah. self-educating and creating these, these learnings themselves, it still needs that direction. Yeah, I mean, I think it happens both ways. I think, you know, there's no monolith of any, you know, types of people, communities, et cetera. I think mm. that, uh, you can do it, you know, several ways, but it just has to be clear. It can be by, you know, gender. We, of course, see a lot of, you know, female-focused mm -hmm. um, um, accelerators and incubators. Um, we see some that are just... I know, I exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, we also see um, a lot of kind of, you know, industry-specific uh, accelerators that are coming, and incubators that are coming up the pike. Um, that makes it very clear on, you know, what their goals are and how they're, you know, curating their mm -hmm. partnership and their communities yeah. around those themes. And I don't think that there's necessarily wrong, one wrong answer or I think there's space for kind of everybody. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, I think the best in class incubators are, you know, really clear on certain parameters around, um, you know, what they provide. So I think, you know, accelerators and incubators, you know, need to, con to, to continue to be, you know, very clear on this is how we're creating our community so to support these entrepreneurs, um, whether it's through the, you know, the, the life cycle, uh, the ideation life cycle, mm -hmm. all the way to, you know, ready to go, go to market, you know, and how we're supporting um, them. I think that's where some accelerators and incubators are accelerating themselves and how mm -hmm. some of them are maybe falling a little bit behind or, you know, you, you get into this, this conversation of like, well, what are they focused on? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, well, they're focused on a little bit of everything. It's like, okay. So it's more of an ideation lab, you know? And sure. so thinking about it that way, where again, that's fine. A lot of people have a lot of great ideas that are not ready to build a business yet. Mm -hmm. It's one of the biggest it's changes. Fine. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the biggest changes that I, I feel like I've seen in seeing and participating in, in in how the accelerator space has developed is that it's moved away from the original intentions of a Techstars or a YC where we are going to take the most elite potential yeah. founders that, yes. that, 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 that we can and give them whatever fuel they need. It's, it's become clear that in order to be a really impactful, effective accelerator, you have to know what your outcomes are because it affects the kinds of people that you bring in mm -hmm. uh, as as founders or or ideators or collaborators, but also what you ask uh, of the people in your ecosystem exactly. and the different partners at an organizational level that you design for. Because yes. unless those structures and relationships are clear, then you don't have a platform that can guarantee certain kinds of acceleration replicably right. in specific windows of time. Exactly. Yeah. Agreed. Um, great. And just to make sure that we're making the most of, uh, of our time together here today, I do want to spend a little bit of time looking forward. Yeah. Now that we've established sort of how the accelerator model is changing and has changed, both in terms of creating an actual economy, and I'm still amazed the way that Apri A A Aprica has, um, but also as it becomes more well adopted all over the world. Um, so can you tell us a little bit of how, how those experiences as the executive director of, of this amazing ecosystem yeah. have has created a foundation for, for, for your next steps? Yeah, so just to kind of end up, so, the, so Africa is the accelerator, um, then kind of online competition, this kind of, you know, brick and mortar and virtual space, you know, in kind of a nascent ecosystem on the continent, you know, grew and seeded kind yeah. of the, the foundation of, of, of many more to come behind it. Um, we also had a, a small fund, um, and so as managing director of the fund that kind of supported some of the follow-on investment yeah. for the startups, um, I got, at the kind of end of my tenure, I got really interested in the investor layer, you know, the VC layer, um, and how 
that ecosystem or how VCs were going to um, look at, in that case at the time, it was Africa, kind of African startups and start to invest mm. because mm. We w I wanted to create a pipeline, right? A follow-on support. So you weren't just getting that, those dollars for the initial, initial um, initial you know idea but we actually had portfolio companies that over two or three or four years actually three or four of them we made 19 investments and three or four of them were like you know our cash flow positive i mean they're still going oh, amazing. to this day which um, is, which recalls my favorite and I, i'm just going to jump yeah, in really please. quickly there because it is i think such a powerful number when you think about uh the importance of accelerator and ecosystem development the uh the 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 the, the way that startups going through accelerators yeah continue to survive is really inverting startup survival. So 80% of companies that go through an accelerator like this are still kicking five years later. Oh, absolutely. To your point. Um, and, so, and so I started looking at that VC kind of um, layer. Mm. At the time it was just the layer. Um, I came back to New York, and like I said, I came back to like, oh, New York is, you know, this kind of mix of international ecosystems, tech, et cetera, tech stars was here, kind of uh, growth, like exponential growth. And so I kind of doubled down here, and over the last three years or so, I started seeing this bifurcation. So like you said, there's this been rapid, like, on the ground, uh, incubator and accelerator, exponential growth year on year, um, which is, you know, created the ne a necessary but kind of crowded space, like which accelerate out of the top three or four or, you know, wh who do you, you know, go to if you're not mm -hmm. in school or you're not, you know, um, in a particular, you know, focus on a particular thing. Um, and so, but at the same time, I saw the VCs, um, mm -hmm. the later stage ones, just completely not engaging with the accelerators and incubators because they're too late stage, right? So the more traditional VCs are pricing, they're priced out of early stage investments. But there's this new crop over the last, particularly over the last three or four years around female and diverse VC fund managers that are either coming out of the big boy VC firms and starting their own funds or cor whether the corporate funds or the, uh, the other private sector funds mm -hmm. or there's a new crop of micro funds that are from the two and twenty million dollar range that are um, that are coming out of the Goldman's and other financial institutions that are like we want to convene capital to then make these early because we see what's on the ground right and so we we feel really confident having worked in fin as financial professionals that we can do this work and that layer has now kind of now starting to morph into an ecosystem of VC fund managers and because my work has always been supporting you know female and diverse entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. I saw this gap in the market to take it a step further or step up, uh -huh. you know, as you as you would say, um, and, and really support that ecosystem of, of new um, VC fund managers mm -hmm. that are creating funds between, I mean, it's really, it's interesting, it's been, it's tiered between two million and like a hundred million dollars, yeah, you know, which yeah, is yeah. still considered micro funds um, and supporting them in their fundraising. So mm. supporting them to engage so that they can then invest in the early stage companies that are growing exponentially. So I saw that gap, you know, this is just like the big ecosystem play. Amazing. So VC Include, which we launched this summer, is a kind of think tank data driven advocacy organization uh, that's membership driven. That's a kind of a closed network mm. that invites female and diverse VC fund managers and LPs, which are institutional investors across asset class, to really start to have a one stop shop to engage and invest in the funds yeah. that are investing in early stage entrepreneurs. That that, that is incredible. That and, and and the way that you talk about that in terms of an ecosystem. Uh, is really incredible and reminiscent of what's happened in uh, other startup ecosystems yes. as, as they've developed. So you're creating a network of relationships and resources yeah. at the capital level exactly. that can support development everywhere using just the same kind of exactly. framework. Exactly. So it, do you envision there being some sort of accelerator program for these fund managers? Um, I mean, there's a lot of growth op uh, opportunities for VC include. I mean, there's, I mean, I am, you know, getting so much inbound support and sure. interest yeah, because good. no one's doing this. It's so weird. <laughs> I was it's, gonna say. You know, it's, it's, it's one of yeah. those things that kind of hit me over the head. I was uh, working with Microsoft and it just, I was on a drive and it just was like, well, if they're, if they're not being supported, then who, you know, that kind of thing. I was like, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. It's just kind of taking it 100%, up yeah. uh, a, a level. And so um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's an ecosystem play. I don't know if there's, there could be an accelerator mm -hmm. 
um, module or model, I'd say that would be 2020. And like mm -hmm. right now, it's just the 18 months of like getting mm -hmm. everyone um, bought in, you know, getting the kind of partners, sponsors, et cetera, sure. in. And I mean, they are just every because it's so clear, you know, it's like this is what we're we're looking to catalyze a half a billion dollars in comp in commitments to female and VC fund managers so they can get to their business of investing by 20 to by, you know, first quarter 2020. So very clear KPI. Very clear goal, and uh, and yeah, it's really taking off. Well, wonderful, congratulations! Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and and such an interesting uh, development from uh, all of your Good amazing work, work in yeah. ecosystem and accelerator development that I'm just so excited to to know about and and be close to. So I mean, let me know, uh, and maybe let let, let, let uh, the group so know what, what what is the one way one thing that we should keep in mind about VC include um, um, now that we know about it. I mean, a couple of things. People, you know, some entrepreneurs are like, oh, great. I'm like, it's, it's for investors. <laughs> <laughs> Our convenings, you mm. know, which we're launching nationally in five cities by the end of this year is, you know, VC and LP focused mm -hmm. with some kind of technical assistance support, some legal, some other uh, ecosystem p players that are, that are supportive to, you know, VC fund, mm. banks, et cetera. Um, the other thing is just in terms of, um, you know, advocacy or, or, or media exposure, um, it's all about VCs, LPs, and partners. I mean, Great. that's what we're engaging and looking for, you know, that's it. So tell our LP and GP friends. Please, Great. yes. Thank you so Thank much, Vidya. Uh, this was wonderful. Thank we you. so appreciate you taking I the time. I appreciate you having me. Um, thanks to SAP NextGen for hosting us at their amazing space here Thank at Ten Hutchin Yards. And thanks to Smart Professions for putting this all together. Uh, thank you all for taking the time to listen. I hope you enjoyed. Cheers. <laughs>